Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with no budget reviews. The series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use do it head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR but we do have a lot of fun. Well, 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 viewers, I can't believe that these second generation Lexus ISs are within no budget reviews territory, but actually often they are. This one is a really early IS250. It's one of the very first imported into this country. It dates from December 2005, which was actually the, uh, the launch month for these in the UK. Got a large sized plate. Uh, Lexus Chester was the original supplying dealer, hence the, uh, the D registration. In other countries uh, you could get a lot of other engines with these. Uh, there are only two we can talk about on this channel uh, with this particular generation. But viewers, there's something even more important it's got a beige leather interior. Well, you know that we very much like a beige leather interior, viewers. Um, we'll come back to that in a moment. I think this is actually quite a handsome car. The uh, facelifted ones, there were two facelifts, a one minor one in 2008 and a more major one in uh, 2010. Do look a bit better, but this is, this is fine. It's a, actually a very handsome car. The IS isn't sold in this country anymore. Um, they've been replaced with a selection of kind of, you know, crossovers and things like that. But this is a time when Lexus were going for a kind of BMW 3 Series and a Mercedes C-Class and Audi A4 market with this car. And it's, it's, very, it's very nicely equipped indeed. This is the SE model, which is the most common one, I think. If I can get into the boot, that would uh, help. Hold on a second, viewers. The release is in a really weird place. It's actually here, uh, but it's not in the middle at all. Uh, there is a little emergency thing here to get in with the key. It's not the biggest boot, and the aperture's not massive either. It's only 378 litres, this boot. Bear in mind, something like a, an E90 BMW 3 Series would be significantly bigger than this. So if we lift up here, do we actually get any joy with um, anything we go we get a luggage cover that was some Japanese writing something that falls off that's not that's not very good let's try pulling it in another way there we go oh yes we have a space saver spare and a jack excellent that's better um, we we'll probably can take that luggage cover out if you want to as well to increase a bit of space but it's nice and flat little tie down point there um, some metal hooks uh, trunk storage extension pull so we've got a ski hatch in there, that's, uh, that's good, isn't it? One thing you don't get on this car, bearing in mind, and I'll, I'll show you this in a bit, we've got heated and ventilated seats. You do not get parking sensors. You do not get a reversing camera. They were available on the next trim up, which I think called the uh, um, SEL. It's a bit mean, really, isn't it? So uh, this car was um, with one owner for quite a lot of its life. I think he must have ordered it, actually, um, before the car was even launched. And it's a manual, which is uh, rather nice. Beige leather interior, V6 engine, manual, six-speed gearbox, in a car that you could buy an example of for about a thousand pounds. Excellent. So I've just shut the door so we don't get in the way of people passing by. It's an interesting door pocket, this. It kind of extends like that. You can have it in or out. And you can put your bottle of drink in there. I don't think there are actually that many cup holders in here. I'm just going to put the key inside the cup holder here. And as you can see, we've got heated and ventilated seats on both sides. 
You like a bit of luxury views. We like a bit of luxury very much. And look at this. The dials are sort of hidden. But they light up. Yes. Mmm. And we also have dual zone climate control. Now bear in mind, this was, I think, on launch. This is like the base model. You could just get a normal IS250, but it was a non-SE below this later on. But I think this was um, the kind of base model upon launch. We've got um, a CD player that will actually uh, play, um, I think, WMAs and MP3s and all sorts of exciting things like that. There we go, WMA and MP3. Um, I don't know where the AUX input is. Um, maybe that's... It's very unusual for a car in 2005 to have that, but oh, actually, oh, 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 I think we found it. I think it's in here. Look at this locking wheel nuts and aux input, sliding beige leather armrest. Mmm, viewers, I think we might be getting too excited. Uh, yes, that's what happens on no budget reviews beige leather interior edition we look at very luxurious cars that you could buy for not much money with beige leather interiors no wood though which is a bit of a shame but never mind um got glove box we've got double shelf glove box in here as well um which would be good i'm just gonna turn the ignition off i don't think we need that at the moment uh different modes in here the cruise control stalk is just there um, can toggle the display. We might have a look at that actually in a, in a bit. Um, all the cars actually had, uh, I think, the Jaws on climate control and the start stop button. They all had keyless entry. Come to here, we. Ooh. Oh, viewers. Mmm. <laughs> I'm much too excited, aren't I? I'm far too excited. Um, this happens with uh, when we do base level of interior edition viewers uh, we get excited about luxury features and in fact there are more luxury features here uh, we have all auto electric windows they all automatically go up and down we have power folding door mirrors um, it just keeps coming I don't know why you need a locking button on the passenger door as well as the driver's door but never mind that's just fine. Let's just uh, see if we can get in the back. I gather it's a little bit tight, but uh, we shall do it anyway. Okay, viewers, let's go in this side. Right, so it's a similar position to the driver. Maybe a little slightly further back. Let's see if there's actually any room in here for me. It's not looking very good. Oh, gosh. It's like noises I make with Mr. Manning watching from Matty's cars. Uh, you can put your feet under the seats like this. This isn't very comfortable, is it, viewers? Uh, you'd have to ask your passenger to slide that forward significantly. Um, we do well have to have some beige leather on the door cards. Mmm. Oh, and a massive beige leather armrest. Um, so that's going to be comfortable. My legs are not. I'm not even a very tall person. I'm only about five foot eleven. So that's not very good. I do, however, like um, some air vents in the back and a uh, little ashtray which has never been used. That's very nice. Uh, three three point seat belts, side curtain airbags. I'll just adjust myself a little bit so we can have a look at this beige leather armrest properly. Well, viewers, I, I can't think we've got. Yes, we have. We've got cup holders galore in here. Yes, and we've got a place to put many things, like a plastic teaspoon, uh, which is interesting. And um, I'll just have to, have to just adjust myself a little bit better to um, see if we can get that down and uh, operate the ski hatch. So the ski hatch is there, but you have to operate it from inside the boot, which isn't much fun. Let's put that back up and see how... It, oh. Mm. <laughs> too much luxury viewers, too much excitement. Um, while we're excited, why don't we uh, get the secret mission documents out and see if they'll go in the glove box. Viewers, I did not enjoy getting out of there. If I'd been recording that, Mr. Manning from Matty's Cars would have had a field day. But I wasn't recording. Sorry, Mr. Manning.
Okay, so can we fit it in here? Um, no, what? No. Ah, viewers, no good for spy work. Can't close me secret mission documents in there. Let's put them in there, shall we, for now. Let's break up to just one hand, there we go. Okay. Right. After that slight disappointment, although we have got electric seats on both sides, which is nice to go with the heated and ventilated option. Let's uh, open up the bonnet and have a look at this very nice 2.5 litre V6 engine. Goodness gracious me, uh, Lexus really didn't want the home mechanic to be servicing their IS250, did they? Look at this. Uh, all that's really here is there's the screen wash, there's the all filler cap, typical old sort of Toyota one, and there's the brake fluid reservoir. Everything else is under mountains and mountains of plastic. At least the batteries actually here are not in some really weird place like on, I don't know, something like an E93 series. And we've got hydraulic struts as well, which is good. Right, viewers, uh, let's go for a little drive. Right, viewers, a nice smooth drive in a Lexus IS 250. There were really only two engines in this country that we can actually talk about um, on the channel. The uh, 2.5 litre V6 in this, which generated 205 horsepower, and then the crazy 416 horsepower uh, 5 litre V8, which I can't believe they fitted a 5 litre V8 to a car like this. It's, it's just extraordinary um, to think about that. But they did, and you can buy one. It has much stiffer suspension than this in comes with a standard um, eight-speed automatic gearbox. The uh, normal IS250 was available with either um, an automatic or a six-speed manual, like in this car. There are also some diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, um, I'm afraid we don't talk about diesels on this channel. So rather than wait an absolute age to come out of that junction to the right views, we'll just come around this roundabout and come back, which means we can see a bit better how this car handles. So it's rear wheel drive, it's um, based on the same platform, I think it's a, a Toyota Crown and all kinds of other Lex, Lexuses, Lexi, <laughs> dear me, it's turning into one on Partridge again around here. Um, Unfortunately, I've had to stop again. What, what is all the traffic around here? Um, we're on the uh, edge of Huddersfield today. I should have asked Steph and my driver Classic where the you know most congested area in Yorkshire is, and it appears it's it's right here, which is a bit of a shame. But never never mind. Let's um let's go around this corner. Oh, that's that's quite nice actually. Steering's on the light side, but I can actually feel it quite well. The engine makes a fantastic noise, it pulls really well. This manual gearbox is quite nice, the clutch bite's quite high, um, which is a bit long. I have to put my seat back a little bit more than I imagined to actually accommodate that. But yeah, it seems, it seems pretty talky. Not to 16, this car's about 8 seconds. It's obviously considerably quicker if you're on the F version. Let's go up into fifth, there we go. Yeah, it's very pleasant with the cruise control, this nice seated position, the heated and ventilated seats. This would be a really nice kind of car for the motorway cruising. It would be absolutely ideal for that. Um, but the chassis seems good as well. But I, I, I've heard people say the ride's quite firm in these, even if you don't have the um, sport model with the uh, different suspension and the close ratio gearbox. But as far as I'm concerned, it's it's just fine.
mind you, the roads around here aren't very good like a lot of places in this country. Um, stick it in a second, there we go. Yeah, the, the, the short test drive I'm doing today, I don't have a lot of time to take this car out on more open roads, so I'm, I'm filming quite a few cars today, so um, it's not the longest test drive, but it, it does give me a really good fiddle up, it's like, <laughs> I forgot to mention views, we've not just got a, a, a six-speed manual in this, we've also got a conventional handbrake. It just gets better. Um, yeah, I don't think really, apart from the terrible rear visibility and the poor rear space and the boot's quite small, I don't think there really are too many disadvantages with this car. I, I imagine this would be a lot more reliable than uh, something like an E90 BMW 3 Series. And um, this one's only done 53,000 miles, which is brilliant. You can see why Arthur, who owns this car, has a big collection of other cars as well, likes using this one on a daily basis. I, I understand entirely why you would choose something like this. And you can run it on E10 as well, of course. And it's optional emissions zone compliant. Wonderful. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. Let's now look at some Lexus IS trim levels, specifically the uh, XE20 version of the IS, like this one. So there was a base model, just the IS250. Um, then the SE, the SEL, that I think did get the parking sensors. The Sport, that had different suspension, I think a close ratio gearbox in it. Um, the Advance, the F Sport, the SEI, the SR, and the SR Multimedia. Of course, there was the ISF version that had the 5 litre V8 engine with 416 horsepower. Excellent. Um, I'm sure that's a lot of fun. So viewers, should you consider an IS250 Lexus for your hard-earned budget up to £1,000? Well, there aren't that many of these cars around um, for that kind of money. They do sort of come up. I, I'd be a bit more realistic and say this car's worth probably between two and £3,000. But you do see them sometimes for, you know, under 1000 and I, I can't believe what you get. I'd much rather have one of these than a 3 Series. I just wouldn't want to carry anybody in the back. That's a real weakness of this car, both in terms of the space and also in terms of the visibility. And I would prefer to have one with parking sensors. But otherwise, I don't see why not. Just check for rust um, and make sure it's been serviced properly. The Lexus dealers I gather are very good. And uh, enjoy some beige leather interior goodness. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video in the comment below, and uh, we shall see you again soon for more inexpensive motoring.